Dr. Vicki Peterson here. Perhaps you saw Nightline a couple of nights ago, and uh, if you did, maybe you're as angry as I am. I didn't see it at the time, but a patient told me about it, so I watched it online. And what it was about was uh, gluten-free. That part was exciting. But is it a diet for everyone? Are there any liabilities of the diet? And uh, the article started uh, with showing some celebrities who are gluten-free, Victoria Beckham, uh, Jenny McCarthy. Uh, with Jenny, she has a son with ADD who she thinks uh, starting a gluten-free diet with him for actually curing her son of ADD. They made that statement, the interviewer, but then followed it immediately with the fact that quote, there was no scientific evidence to support that going gluten-free would improve ADD symptoms. That's absolutely incorrect. The evidence is quite strong showing that gluten impacts the nervous system only second to the digestive tract and creates a lot of problems anywhere from ADD or hyperactivity, migraines, ataxia, all sorts of issues with the nervous system and there is oodles of scientific research to support that. So then they went on to Elizabeth Hasselbeck who wrote a book and she was uh, interviewed as she walked through Whole Foods showing her favorite frozen food section and um, speaking about the diet and what she told the interviewer was that she felt that people who did not have celiac would benefit from a gluten-free diet which I absolutely concur. Interestingly, they followed up her statement with going right to her personal physician, uh, Dr. Peter Green, uh, also out of New York. And uh, I'm going to look at my notes here for just a second, so if you see my eyes wander, that's why. But I want to get this quote exactly right. So the interviewer said to Dr. Peter Green, are there any benefits that you know of for someone going on a gluten-free diet if they do not have celiac disease? And Dr. Peter Green said, not that I'm aware of, which just flabbergasted me considering once again all the research showing that not only is celiac on the rise, but there's absolutely patients who are suffering from gluten sensitivity. They do not have the gene for celiac. They do not get the villus atrophy or small intestinal destruction, but they absolutely get damage to their small intestine and many systems of their body can be affected from the digestive tract with IBS, colitis, uh, being obese, to the neurological problems of ataxia, migraines, uh, having tingling and numbness, to infertility, depression, mood swings, memory loss, osteoporosis, fatigue, the whole spectrum of autoimmune diseases, it goes on and on and on, over 130 symptoms associated with gluten sensitivity. And he said that, it just amazes me. But then it saddens me because how many people heard this or will hear of it and say, oh, I'm not going to try it because I was tested for celiac disease and I don't have it. That's sad. It's terribly sad. In this interview, uh, they continued with repeatedly mentioning that if you did not have celiac disease, that actually going gluten-free could be dangerous. And the word dangerous was very strongly said and said repeatedly. When the danger was talked about what it would be, specifically, once again, Dr. Peter Green mentioned it was low in fiber, it was low in B vitamins, and it was low in calcium. Interestingly, where do we get our fiber in a healthy diet? From fruits and vegetables. Do they have any gluten in them? No, they do not. Where do we get our B vitamins? Yes, we can get them from whole grains, but we should get them from bananas and potatoes and lentils, green vegetables once again, eggs, other sources of animal protein are all excellent sources of B vitamins. Do they have any gluten in them? No, they do not. What is the best source of calcium? Dark green leafy vegetables. Does it have gluten in it? You know the answer. Okay, so should we prevent people from getting 
checked for gluten sensitivity. Gluten sensitivity that could be the root cause of severe symptoms, life-threatening symptoms. Should we prevent them from doing that because they're on a standard American diet and if they go gluten-free, they might lose some fiber or B vitamins? Nonsense. So please, let people know that was not a good use of our time. And Dr. Peter Green, if I knew him personally, I'd be yelling at him. So maybe somebody else can for me. And this is important. This is terribly important because we're really making some headway in this area. And this interview was a bit of a slap in the face and not accurate. That's really key. Not accurate. So hang in there. It's absolutely critical to find out if you're gluten sensitive. Probably 30 to 40 percent of us are and our health would improve dramatically if we knew it and we have to let others know who need to be tested. So until next time, I wish you very good health.